So this is the new AC200 Max by Blue Eddy. And I've been testing it for over a month now. I've literally tested this more than any other solar generator that I've ever had in the past. So first, there is 4,000 watt hours of expansion batteries, which means you can have a plug and play 6,000 watt hour lithium iron phosphate system that anyone can build in minutes. Next, the inverter output is 2,200 watts. So that's 200 watts higher than the previous model. Next, the new model can handle 900 watts of solar power input, and that is continuous duty all day long. On the old model, the 200P by Blue Eddy, it could only handle 700 watts which over the course of the day means that you have 1,200 watt hours or more that you can add to this battery. And I've been over paneling this system for over a month. So let me show you the solar array that I have connected to the system. And this micro solar array is connected to the Blue Eddy. We have three 440 watt panels in series. So even though the max input is 900 watts, I've had 1,320 watts connected for over a month now. And the moment the sun comes up, I have 900 watts going into that system. This is called over paneling. I am not exceeding the max input voltage of the Blue Eddy, but the Blue Eddy limits the input current. And this little array cranks out some serious power, you guys. We get 900 watts for about six hours a day. And this is the solar input. It's connected to an XT90 connector and an MC4 adapter. So you can string your panels in series and then connect them to this unit. And this is the battery expansion cable. You simply plug it in and then you slide this small switch forward. And now there's a connection between the main unit and this expansion battery. But this battery expansion will not turn on until you either turn it on right here and then the green light shows or you charge it. And how I've tested this unit is very interesting. I've never done this before. I have the inverter's AC output connected to a 48 volt, 1300 watt battery charger. And this charges my main solar power system in my shop. And then my other solar power system charges the expansion batteries. And this allows me to run the inverter 24 hours a day, seven days a week with about 31,000 watt hours every single day. But over the course of the month, I almost ran an entire megawatt hour through this unit. And the inverter circuit is a champ. I have not had any high temperature problems. I've ran it flawlessly. So this inverter circuit is solid and there's even an RV plug right here. This is only 120 volts though, and I really wish there was a 240 volt receptacle. That would be very nice. Also, when I first got the unit, I got 88% of its rated capacity at the inverter's output. So the inverter is also efficient, and that includes the total capacity with the battery expansion. So now that we have all the good stuff out of the way, let's talk about the bad stuff that I found in this unit. So the biggest downside is that when you have the expansion battery packs connected and you discharge this whole system to zero, it will turn off the expansion packs. And if you have solar connected and it starts to recharge in the morning, it only charges the main unit's battery. It does not wake up the expansion packs. If you want these expansion packs to turn on again, you need to get out the AC adapter and manually charge it and then turn it on. In my opinion, that's not acceptable for a truly autonomous off-grid system. When it gets solar up here, it should be able to charge the entire battery automatically. And this happened this morning, so you can see how the main unit's at 100, and it did not charge or turn on the expansion battery packs. And I did tell Blue Eddy about this problem, so hopefully they'll fix it with the software update. But if they do not fix that, that's a huge downside. I would not personally spend the money on these expansion batteries if they do not fix that problem. Next, this is very heavy. It's so heavy, in fact, that if someone were to run into it and there was a pet or a small child on the other side, you could seriously hurt them. So I think that these modules should be able to connect together with some form of locking mechanism. And there should be a stand with a wide base of support on the bottom. That way it will not tip over. Also, personally, I do not like the look of these cables sticking out on the side. I wish there was another way, such as like the Titan solar generator, how they're internal so you don't see any wires at all. Now the next problem was very strange. Early in the morning, I came out to the garage and the screen would not respond to any form of input. And this lasted for four hours. I still do not know why it did that. I could turn the unit off and back on again, but the screen still would not respond. I could not turn the inverter on. I could not turn the DC output on. I couldn't do anything. 
and I emailed the company and by the time they responded, it was working again. So I'm not sure why that happened. Now the next problem is I think they should have increased the capacity of the solar charge controller. And they solved that by having these battery expansion chargers with 500 watts of charging power. So you connect an MC4 adapter right here and then you plug this in down here. But imagine having multiple chargers and all of these wires all over the place and multiple arrays to, just to charge this single unit. I would rather have two conductors going in with a larger input capacity. That would be ideal. Personally, I would not buy this system with the expansion battery packs, but the main unit is very powerful. I really like this. As a standalone solar generator, it's incredible. This is literally everything that the AC200P should have been previously. It has lithium iron phosphate, we have 900 watts of solar, and for this size of battery, that's fantastic. You also have a good AC output. I also forgot to mention that I ran 2,500 watt load through this thing for a few minutes without problem. But having the screen lock up for no reason scares me a lot. So in my opinion, I would wait three to six months until they sort out all the software issues. That was a problem in the past models and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a problem in this model. But once Bluetti solves all the software issues, usually they have very good systems. Now, would I personally buy this or the EcoFlow Delta Pro? I am currently not reviewing the Delta Pro because I do not have it. Once it's off of crowdfunding platforms, then EcoFlow plans to send me their entire ecosystem. And honestly, that thing has some incredible features and new features that this one does not have. And personally, I like the EcoFlow Delta, so that might be a promising unit. So as of right now, I do not have an opinion on the EcoFlow Delta Pro, but personally, I would not buy the Blue Eddy or the EcoFlow Delta Pro until a couple thousand units go out to customers and we hear what they have to say. I'm gonna be checking the forum and seeing if anybody has any issues with either model. And I suggest that you guys do the same. These systems should last for 10 or even 15 years, especially with the lithium iron phosphate battery. And when you spend this kind of money, you want to ensure that you're getting the best. I know you can get discounts on the crowdfunded platform projects, but personally, I would avoid those. I think the current assortment of solar generators is already really, really good. And we can be patient for this next generation to sort out the problems. Because I promise you, there will be problems to come. I haven't seen a single release that didn't have some form of software problems or something. And that's all I have to say about this unit. I'm gonna continue using this unit for a while and I'm gonna use it to charge up my main system. Every day it supplies about five kilowatt hours to my solar power system that runs my air conditioner in my workshop. And I trust that it will work for a very long time. Typically these things are really nice. I do like them a lot. Um, I will let you guys know if I find any other software bugs. Also, when the screen locked up, not show up on the error logs, and I don't know why. And that's pretty concerning. So yeah, that's very common with new products, but yeah, I would be very cautious still. And that's all I have to say. I hope you guys liked the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.